In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the standard level creation workflow from BSP brushes to the final level or your final environment. So in the previous two videos, we covered what are BSP brushes and why you should use them and what are BSP blackouts. But in order to understand the BSP blackout process and how it comes together from the initial BSP blackout to the final level, to the final game environment, it helps to see the entire process from beginning to end and all the steps in between. So here's the big picture. For this, I always like to use the UE4 Content Examples project. And this project is available for you to download from the Learn section. And it's right here, Content Examples. In this project, inside the Maps folder, you'll find a map called Level Design Workflow. If I go ahead and open that up, it shows you the entire process from prototyping using BSP brushes to static meshes to lighting and to the final polish pass. So let's go through this workflow step by step from beginning to end so you can begin to incorporate it into your own work. And I'm going to tell you about additional steps that aren't covered in this example, which will depend if you are creating a playable level or a non-playable environment. The first step in this process, as you probably already know, is the BSP blackout. This is when you use nothing else but BSP brushes to black out the initial layout, the floor plan of your standalone game environment, or a playable level. This is where you focus on the spatial relationship of architecture. It's where you determine the size, the scale, and the correct proportion of your environment. And in this example, you can see that nothing else was used except for BSP brushes. And if I go ahead and disable static meshes from view, all the other examples disappear, and all we see are BSP brushes. So this is the most important step in the workflow process. And it's your first step. And the BSP blockout becomes your framework onto which the rest of the environment and then eventually the final level is built on. So if I go ahead and spawn inside this block out and walk around and if you pay attention to the scale and the dimensions and how the overall environment is, if I jump over to the static mesh phase, the same dimensions and the proportions that were used in the BSP block out transfer over to the static mesh phase. The width of the hallway, the doorways, the height of the steps, how high they go, how big they are, and the overall proportions are almost identical from the BSP phase. So even though we no longer have any BSP brushes here, the static meshes are placed in the same position to maintain that same feel and proportion that was done in the BSP blackout. And there might be some differences in terms of the size of the static meshes, and they might not be exactly one-to-one, -one, but it feels almost identical from the blackout phase. In addition to the BSP blackout, if you are creating a playable level where the player will spawn and play, whether it's a single player or a multiplayer, or just an interactive environment, it's very important that you also begin to incorporate gameplay. This is where you add gameplay mechanics, level scripting, as well as testing flow, pacing of the level, and all the elements to make this level playable. Now, if you're working on a standalone game environment, meaning that the environment is not going to be playable, and it's just a scene you are creating, then you can skip the playtesting and the gameplay mechanics implementation, and the scripting part, you can leave those out. But in the case of a playable level, your map has to be playable from beginning to end, during the blackout BSP phase. And realize that it's not gonna look pretty, but it should be playable. And to add on top of this step, focus on this acronym, M-I-T. And you're gonna be doing this a lot, not just during the BSP blackout phase, but throughout the entire process of completing your environment. And this stands for modify, iterate, and test. You should always be modifying iterating, and testing your level. And during the BSP blackout phase, this is where a lot of the bigger changes happen. 
But then as you move through the process, they become less and less and it becomes more about tweaking and optimizing. But you will always be modifying, iterating, and testing. After the BSP blackout, scripting, and gameplay mechanics, you move on to the next step, static meshing. This is where you replace BSP brushes with static meshes. And it's where you begin to insert the geometry that will be used in the final level. This is where you move on from prototyping to the art pass. Because the level, the functionality of it, is done. In the BSP stage, you should be able to spawn inside your map and play the entire level. It's now your skeleton, your framework, onto which you make your environment pretty. And yes, all the work you've done with PSP brushes are now going to be replaced with static meshes. So in this example, the framework was created with PSP brushes, gameplay mechanics were tested, the level scripting works, and now all the PSP brushes have been replaced with static meshes. And again, if I disable static meshes from view, you can see we have no BSP brushes in this level. So that's going to be your next step. And your goal is to replace as many BSP brushes as you can with static meshes. And you should aim for 100% static meshes if you can. But it's okay if you have a few BSP brushes left over for simple geometry. Maybe a piece of a floor, maybe a wall or a ceiling. But your goal should always be all static meshes. Since the way BSP brushes are used in UE4, they were never intended as final in-game geometry. And static meshes are far more optimized and result in better performance. The next step is a lighting pass. This is where you begin to add lights. So static meshes have been inserted and your environment is beginning to look good. You have your final in-game geometry and now you need to focus on lighting it. Now whether you decide to use dynamic lighting, static lighting, ray tracing, or a combination of all of the above, it doesn't matter. And in this example, we went from a bland, standard, default lighting, and now we see more concentrated effort on making this environment come to life. The important part here is to decide what are your light sources. Is this an exterior lit environment? where your primary light will come from the sun or the moon? Or is it an interior lit environment? And it will be lit with a combination of spotlights, point lights, and rect lights. And in this example, it's a combination of the two. We have exterior light, the sunlight, that is being controlled by the directional light. And then we have interior lights, and their sources come from these fire stands. And a lot of your time will be spent on simulating and trying to achieve the correct and realistic lighting for your environment. So you'll be tweaking, adjusting and building your lights a lot. Now in this example it shows you that adjusting post process is also part of the lighting pass. But I like to adjust post process as its own separate pass. So right after the lighting pass I go in into post process pass and work on the atmosphere and the visuals of how this environment is going to look. So the post process is where you adjust the visual look of your environment, of your playable level. And then after the lighting pass and the post process pass, you go into the polish pass. In this pass you can do a bunch of things together or you can split each of them into their own separate step. So during the polish pass, this is where everything comes together. You add effects, reflection actors, blocking volumes to prevent player from going outside the boundaries of your map. You add audio and you bring this environment together. This is the final detail. So you can follow the sequence of steps through each of these passes and work on your own environments, on your own levels. So to summarize this, you start with a prototype pass using BSP brushes to block in the layout of your environment of your playable level. And if it is a playable level, then you also have to begin implementing gameplay mechanics, scripting your view level, testing gameplay, flow, and pacing. And your level should be playable during this prototype pass. Then you move on to a meshing pass. This is where you replace all your BSP brushes 
with final in-game geometry, 3D models, or static meshes. And you use the BSP brushes as the framework, so you know where to place those static meshes. Then you go on to the lighting pass by inserting lights and lighting your environment. And in addition, you also begin to work on the post process by inserting post process volume and controlling the visuals of how your environment is going to look. After that, you move into the polish pass. There are quite a few steps here, so you can separate them into their own pass by adding effects, reflection actors, blocking volumes, audio, particle effects, and the final detail of your environment. So by going through each of these passes, you can take your initial idea and methodically work to complete your environment or your playable levels. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe so you don't miss any more tutorials. And if you want to learn Unreal Engine 4 as an absolute beginner without wasting your time trying to look for this information yourself, get Unreal Engine 4 Fundamentals Volume 1, the essential beginner's guide to Unreal Engine 4 course, where you will finally learn Unreal Engine 4 in just 7 hours. You'll find the link in the description below, or if you're on the website, right above you go to Full Courses and click on UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1. And I will see you in the next video.